Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about how to push your limits as a programmer. So let's get into it. So I think this is a good question. Basically the question in question is, Frederick, well, how do I push myself as a programmer? How do I get better? And there are many, many, many ways to do this. It kind of depends on where you are in your career and how far you've come along. I mean, for me, what I need to do in order to push myself might be different from what you need to push yourself. We're all at different levels, right? And yeah, I, I, that's the tricky part about this, but I'm just gonna make an assumption here. I'm gonna assume that you've been working for a little while, maybe you've gotten to a point where you feel fairly confident in the everyday programming that most of us do, where you might be making some CRUD applications, you might be doing some styling on a web page, building something with React or Angular or Vue or some other SBA framework. I mean, you're, you're able to produce web applications of some sort, right? Now, if you wanna go beyond that, one of the best ways, I've, at least that I've found, to push your limit is to start thinking about additional skill sets that will help you in the application construction that you're doing. So what I mean by that is basically that the everyday stuff that you do is usually focused on producing an application of some sort. Now, the surrounding parts of this process of creating an application is usually more niched than that. An example would be that if you want to be an even better software developer than you are, then maybe looking in, getting really deep into say infrastructure or something like that, architectural decisions and stuff like this for a large scale system, distributed systems and so forth, would be a very no good next step in order to enhance your own learning because it's the sort of thing that it, as a beginner, it doesn't really, well, of course it matters. It's just that it's not something that you are really expected to, to know about. You're not really expected to necessarily know how to set up a Kubernetes cluster or something like that and work with it. In some cases, maybe, but for the most part, it's more advanced stuff, I would say. So that is one of these things that I will argue that is a supplement to your ability to produce an application. Other examples of this would be say machine learning, something of this nature where you have a very niche sort of problem or a very specific sort of problem that you could apply machine learning in order where you can apply machine learning to solve that problem. Now, it's not directly focused on the actual development of a specific application necessarily. It's more something that it, it widens your ability to solve problems, if that makes sense. I mean. Pro, it's, that's kind of the process of programming right there. You start out without knowing how to code and then you have some type of, type of problem that you believe that you can solve through software development. You learn how to code in order to be able to create a solution to that problem. And when you now know how to write software, which is the most common software that we write, the next step will be of course to figure out, okay, how can I take this even further? What skill sets can I add to my own bag of, of bag of skills that will allow me to make even more sophisticated solutions that I, than I actually can. One of my favorite things that I argue is one of the higher levels of uh, software development is to get really deep into uh, library, auth being library creation, basically. So bec learning how from the masters, the people who are really good at this sort of thing, and like how do you sustain and how do you develop a library that is used by other developers because it's extremely hard to, well, rather I will argue that you really need to understand the problems of software developers and the problems of software to be able to do this sort of thing, to create a library that has some type of real value and that really gets used by other developers in their own work process. But it's also one of those things that I believe is among the most valuable, not just for the people working, but for you as well, because it's going to push, that, that for sure is going to push your limits as a software developer, because the standards that you will have to impose on your own code is in that sort of scenario is going to be a lot higher than what you may normally do when you're developing just, you know, 
for any type of application, right? But yeah, that's gonna be my answer. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you wanna push your limit as a software developer, you can go into develop, uh, you, you should ask yourself what are things that are I'm lacking right now that will enhance my ability to deliver applications. So having things, having look at things such as infrastructure, security, or things like that, or having a look at machine learning or something like that that has that enhances your ability to write specific sorts of applications that solve specific sorts of problems. You can also go in, of course, into competitive coding where you basically challenge your ability to write efficient code and solutions to complicated problems. That's also something that is useful. And my personal favorite is to become a library author of some sort to try to f learn how to become good at that sort of thing. Because that's the, one of those things that is just universally super useful. Because if you can be a library author and make really good libraries for other developers, it's going to make them more productive and it's also going to give you a very different perspective on your own craft. And I think that that is an enormously valuable skill set to have. Have a great day.